The deepening and widening of the Matagorda ship channel in Port Lavaca is at the center stage of a legal battle between environmentalists and the Calhoun Port Authority. The project is now on hold. One pilot gives his perspective on the issue, saying safety is the main concern. The Matagorda Ship Channel Improvement Project, first sanctioned back in 2020 with the approval of Congress and the Army Corps of Engineers, aimed to dredge the Matagorda Bay for oil expert purposes in the port of Calhoun. The deepening and widening of the channel would allow for larger cargo ships to pass through the port terminals, cutting production time in half and increasing revenue for the local economy. Matagorda County all have a piece of to lose by this not happening. I mean, whether whether the, the project's put into Calhoun County or whether it's Victoria, Matagorda, Jackson, we all benefit from anything coming across a wider, deeper channel. Because at the end of the day, if it's built in Victoria, people in Calhoun County are gonna have jobs there. If it's built in Calhoun County, same thing. And while the bay's expansion would provide economic boost, not just for Port Lavaca, but for the surrounding counties, a group of environmentalists under the pseudonym Waterkeepers, led by local fourth generation fisher and native Diane Wilson, claim this dredging project would prove to be an ecological disaster. The Hart Institute in uh, 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 Port Aransas, they had said that there was over 800 acres that would be uh, impacted that would be buried in over a thousand acres of sea grasses. And uh, if you disperse mercury back into the water column, you could start impacting, uh, I mean, the whole health, not only of the, of the fish and uh, uh, marine animals, but human health. The lawsuit filed by the Waterkeeper cites research from the Hart Institute for Gulf of Mexico Studies conducted by the help of some experts from Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. The study is an assessment of the potential ecological and physical effects the dredging could have on the surrounding bay. Still, no new samples or statistical analysis were performed. The research was solely based on literature review of past projects that closely resemble Matagorda Bay. What the assessment did conclude was that oyster beds and seagrass would be highly impacted. It also states mercury mobilization caused by the dredging is a major concern, but, quote, new mercury concentration assessment should be conducted to accurately assess the current location and concentration of the mercury in Lavaca Bay. Captain David Adrian, a Matagorda Bay pilot with 17 years of experience, claims his main concern lies with the safety of his crew and ship. Number one is uh, safety is our number one priority, and we can't work our way around that. We can't be involved with the financial outcome of the, the port or a customer. Uh, that's just not in our nature. It's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. We're out here handling $100 million vessels full of hundreds of millions of dollars of cargo, chemicals from all over the world, and in the most hostile conditions imaginable. Uh, like today, we have you know 25 to 30 knots of wind and almost five knots of current on the bar. Uh, that's just a day for us. Captain Adrian wrote a letter to the Army Corps of Engineers shortly before they withdrew approval, asking them to reconsider. In his letter, Captain Adrian describes the Matagorda ship channel as the most dangerous on the Gulf Coast, as it ranks second in the nation to the Columbia River Bar in Oregon. <laughs> As we continued our ride along, climbing from a small pilot ship onto the SC Virgo cargo ship, we experienced what Captain Adrian describes as deadly waters, which have claimed a handful of lives over the past decade across several ports in the United States. The Matagorda ship channel in particular is extremely shallow and narrow. This makes directing a large cargo ship difficult, allowing room for error, which could potentially cause a spillage and thus cause damage to the surrounding area. But we're only 200 feet wide and we're the narrowest. Uh, this channel was designed for ships that were built in the 1960s. Here it is 2022, we're on fifth generation vessels and they only get bigger and bigger and bigger. And we can't seem to get widened and deepened to accommodate these larger vessels. Executive Director Charles Hosman says this regional project will continue with its legal challenges in court. Hosman says this won't be the last time we hear about the Matagorda dredging project with more to come.